Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath to you all. On behalf of Michiana Malawi SDA Church, allow me to welcome each one of you to this wonderful worship service. We are still meeting online. We have heard about the plans that Michi Michigan Conference has sent to us. There are some guidelines that have been set for each and every church to sit down and discuss and find out the best way on how we can reopen church service. We are planning to have a meeting this afternoon when we can discuss on how this reopening shall be done. Brothers and sisters, let us know that the pandemic is still on. So we are taking everything seriously. Once we have discussed, you will be consulted and a decision will be made. So for now, let us continue to enjoy and utilize this opportunity that God has given us that each and every Sabbath we can still have an online worship service. Today we also have another beautiful Sabbath service. But before we transition into that, listen to this announcement. Allow me to thank each and every one of you who remember to return their tithe and offerings last Sabbath, and many of you are still continuing to send your offerings to our treasurer. Our cash up tag and phone number are displayed on the screen. Let us continue to be faithful by remitting our tithe and offerings through the treasury. Once they receive your tithe and offerings, they will acknowledge receipt. May God bless you for continuing to be faithful. Today we are privileged to have a beautiful sermon. Our preacher today is none other than Kondwani Nyurenda. Kondwani Nyurenda is a shepherdess. When we say a shepherdess, it means she is a pastor's wife. Shepherdess Nyurenda is married to Pastor Johnson Nyurenda, who is a student at Andrews University. Together with their family, they served in Malawi for many years. Their husband used to work at Malawi Adventist University. Ms. Kondwani Nyurenda, she used to be a nurse, but she went to Malawi Adventist University where she did her degree in accounting. When she came to America, she continued to study. She now holds a master's degree in business administration. We want to thank God that together as a family, they have served God faithfully in various capacities. But today, Shepherdess Nyerenda, who is married to our pastor, and God has blessed them with three children, one boy and two girls. We are so thankful that today she is ready to prepare a message that will tell us about the seasons of life that we go through. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you that you stop everything that you are doing and utilize this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to join me as we welcome Shepherdess Gondwani Nyurenda on this podium to preach a message. And I want to encourage you that you stop everything that can distract you because this is the holy hour. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let the whole earth be silent before him. Let us be silent by silencing everything that can distract our attention as we listen to God's word. May God meet all your needs and may God speak directly to you. Happy Sabbath to you all. Let us enjoy God's 
message. Amen. I would like to welcome all the viewers. And in a special way, I would like to welcome the members of Michiana Malawi Seventh-day Adventist Church and everyone who is online to watch this sermon. The message for today is entitled Surviving the Seasons of Life. And I'm going to read from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. The Bible says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And in verse 11, the Bible says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. You see, our life here on earth is like a journey towards a certain destination. And this journey can be summarized in four seasons. These seasons can represent the phases of life that we, we pass through. Some people worship different gods according to the season that, that they are in. For example, during harvest, they have a, a, a god of harvest. They can have a god of rain, sun god, moon god, any type of god according to the, the season that they are in. But for our God is a God of all seasons. And so no matter in what season we are in or, or no matter what is happening to us, we can trust in this God who is a God of all seasons to see us through and to take us through the situations that are happening in our lives. These seasons start with spring. As we all know, the weather is also divided in four seasons, and spring represents the new birth, the innocence of everything that is new. When a baby is born, the baby brings joy in the family. Everything that is new brings joy in the family. And some people, they, they feel joyful when the baby is, bo is born that they can celebrate and call other people to come and celebrate with them because of the new birth. This is the same as our spiritual life. When we receive Jesus Christ to be our savior, that new birth that happens in our heart fills us with joy. And we just wish that feeling should remain with us forever. And that spring season is filled with miracles and evidences that God is alive. And this spring season will happen all over again spiritually. But physically, this spring is just a time of a new birth and it will pass. So we need to take care of all the seasons that we are going through physically because they, they will pass. They, they will no longer come again. But spiritually, spring is going to come again. The new birth is going to come because God is creating something new each and every time in our lives. Before we know it, spring turns into summer. And this is the growing season. And this is the time that we feel energetic, like youth. This is filled with vitality and nativity of youth filled with hopes, dreams, and the pursuits of life at its fullest. This is the time that we make plans and we have dreams of what we want to be in life and what we want to achieve. And we are so energetic, so much so that we, we don't know what to do we, with the energy that we have. 
God created this season for, for a purpose. Spiritually, summer is the purpose of, is the season of growth, is a growing season. So I would like to urge our youth that we use the energy that we have right now to work for God, to preach the gospel, to save humanity, to do the work of God so that when this season passes physically that we are going into another season, we would have done what God created us to do. After summer season comes fall season. This is the season that we, we have learned lesson from summer that we would, have, we would have not learned if we didn't pass the summer season. But as we enjoy this fall season, let us remember that we still need to work for God in a, in a fall season, just like the way we were working in summer season when we were full of energy. This time, we also seem to have a lot of knowledge on how to approach challenges more realistically because we would have experienced so many things in summer since we were going to investigate some stuff. We were looking for knowledge. We were experiencing life. Now we would have gained knowledge to face problems, to challenge them realistically. This is the time that we can go hand in hand with those people who are in their summer lives. We need to work together. We need to grow together. We need to challenge the devil together before winter comes when we can say that our life is nothing on earth and we can't do anything else. And we need to work in this season of life, in four seasons. We need to work with all our heart because soon we won't be able to work for God when our energy is gone. We need to know that every act and every way is a seed that will bear fruit in the people who are hearing us. And every deed of thoughtful kindness and obedience and self-denial will produce itself in others. This means that everything that we do and everything that we say is going to produce an effect into other people's lives. That is why when, when we are in our summer season and when we are in fall season where we are, we are, we are actively awake for God, we need to be careful of our words and of our deeds. And so, dear friends, we need to remember that what we sow we will also reap. So now is the sowing time. The summer season and the fall season, we need to sow the kind deeds and the kind words and helping the humanity to relieve suffering. Otherwise, anything that, that we are going to sow in summer and fall, we are going to reap in winter. This fall is also like a season of pruning, the pruning season where God is giving us trials and temptation, is allowing temptations to come to our lives to test our faith. It's, it is not the time to give up. This is the time to press on, to live for God. Sometimes we feel like giving up when we see the temptations and trials that face our lives. But this is not the time to give up. In whatever seasons we are in, let's remember that our God is there to help us. In Psalms chapter 35 verse 4, the Bible says, Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths. My age is as nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but a, vap a vapor. So we should, we need to know that this summer season and this fall season, they will be there for a while, physically. But spiritually, after passing the summer season of work, 
and preaching the gospel and helping others, we are going to go into four season where, where we are going to start reflecting on our work before this world ends. And then the cycle will start over again. Spiritual life is, is something that will be coming all over again. We will go into spring, we will go into summer, we will go into fall, we will go into winter and start all over again. And all these seasons are important to our lives. We need to thank God in all seasons that we find ourselves in. I, I, I'm not sure what season you are spiritually. But in all seasons, we need Jesus to be with us, to help us to do what he wants us to do. If we don't do the work of God in the season that we are in, we are going to destroy ourselves spiritually. And God destroys no man, but everyone who, who is destroyed will have destroyed himself. And each actor in history stands in his lot and place. For God's great work after his own plan will be carried out by men and women who have prepared themselves to fill positions for good or for evil. The choice is yours. Who do you want to serve in this battle? It's either... You are on the side of good or you are on the side of the bad. There is no middle ground. So while your life is in summer period or your life is in fall, that's the time to work for God. Otherwise, when winter comes, you won't have the energy to work for God. This summer quickly slips into winter without even us noticing. And before we know it, all too quickly, this winter is upon us. Our hair reflects the fallen snow. We have a little, we move a little slower, feel the aches and pains of aging, and still we cannot comprehend how quickly we've become the older folks. We never thought we would be, but it still comes whether we like it or not. Then our thoughts will take us to the things we wish we, we had done and, we, and the things we wanted to do. And even we can start regretting of what we, we did do during that summer period and during that fall period. David realized his needs for Jesus in his winter time. And I wish all of us could realize that in all these seasons, we need Jesus to be with us. In Psalm chapter 71, verse 9, there is David's prayer. He said, do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth where I have declared your wondrous work. David did not have time to regret because he knew what he has done for God. He worked for God. He surrendered his life for God. So today I'm pleading with you that let us surrender our lives to God so we should work for him before winter comes where we will say our life has no purpose on earth. In our spiritual life, we also go into this season called wilderness. This time is also very important to our spiritual lives because this is the time that is most required, that is not filled with so many activities or worries or plans or ambitions. It's just a quiet time, a waiting period. You wait upon God and you wonder why God is not acting. But God is giving you time to reflect to what you, you have done during all other seasons before this season. And this season also is, is the most, most important season to our spiritual life because it's the season where God is preparing you for a new birth. After the wilderness, after the winter season in spiritual life, you are going to go into springtime, just like the world goes to these seasons all over again spiritually after the wilderness 
you are going back to the springtime. So sometimes when, when we are in wilderness, we feel like life is over. But God knows what is happening into our lives. And God knows which seasons we are in. All we need is to trust God and to ask God to give us the power and the will to do his job in whatever seasons we are in. Because this wilderness season is there to test our faith. So we just need to keep our faith. And when we are in wilderness, we will not stay there forever. Each season is going to pass spiritually. So we just need to take it as it is and ask God for strength and the will to do his, his work. And also, let me just say this before I forget, that the church as a whole is also going into these seasons. There was a growing season for the church where people were excited with the word and the church was growing rapidly. And the work of God was going all over the world. People were preaching the gospel everywhere. And then the church entered into the pruning season where the church was persecuted and God allowed that to, to, to happen because he wanted to take the church to another level. And then the church entered the wilderness season where we are still waiting for the promise, for the promise coming of the Messiah, but up to now he's not here yet. So friends, I would like to encourage you not to get out of the church because of getting tired of waiting. Because this season will pass. And it's my belief that this will be the last season that we are in. Because after this wilderness, we are going home. So many things happen in wilderness. But the, the Lord is preparing us for the harvest because after the wilderness we are we are going to harvest whatever we have done on this earth we need to hold on to Jesus in this wilderness season because it will not take long when Jesus is coming to this earth so this is my question today are you willing to trust in the Lord in all the seasons of your life can you trust that he is able to see you through this life and take you to be with him when the life ends. My hope and prayer is that we put all our trust in him, leave everything in the hands of the Lord. I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When we are in springtime of our lives, of spiritual life, all the old things are passed away, and we become new creatures. So, friends, I would like to urge you to remain new in Christ, not to go back to the old lifestyle that we have been doing before we knew Christ. Let's remain in Christ because these seasons will come and go and finally the harvest season will come when everything will end on earth and the only thing that will remain in our hearts is the the thing that we did for Christ those are the only things that we are going to take but everything everything that we have in this world is going to stay so let's remain faithful to Christ so that when he comes, he will find us ready for him. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you strength. May the Lord see you through all the seasons of life that you are going through. And may you make the final decision of your life that you are going to trust the Lord in whatever season of life you found yourself in. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your way of life. We want, we want to thank you for you promised us that you will never leave us alone, no matter what is happening to our lives. 
Father, I want to pray that you give us faith and courage to stand still and see your salvation and wait on you. Father, we want to pray that you provide our needs and help us to go through trials and temptation with power and energy in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.